opportunity. Every Friday, we have this opportunity to um, meet uh, and interact with the experts, the speakers uh, of the videos uh, we have followed throughout the week. Um, so welcome uh, everyone in this uh, second uh, meeting and allow me first... We cannot to... hear you uh, well, Leo. You cannot hear me. Does this sound for everyone? We can hear you. Okay, let me start with, I will talk louder, um, with um, setting a, a few housekeeping notes. Uh, as we did in the previous time, uh, it's nice to see familiar names uh, attending. It would be very nicer to see your faces be behind the, the screen. So um, we invite you to leave your camera on. Um, the session is recorded uh, in order for the people who are not able to uh, attend in real time to follow, um, uh, follow the course. Uh, keep your microphone off unless you ask to take the floor and uh, take a, a look at the chat box because from time to time you can um, ask questions or respond to questions we will be uh, asking. Um, we invite you also to um, take away any distractions uh, such as a mobile phone and many other social media uh, websites you have uh, in parallel to, it, to our uh, Zoom meeting and uh, you're welcome of course to have your coffee and notes by your side. So this is the, the second week uh, uh, of our overall course. Our overall course, I remind everyone, uh, deals with um, ocean literacy and how it can be applied and developed uh, particularly in biosphere reserves. Um, so in the first week, we had uh, a look, um, a wider overview uh, of uh, the ocean importance and uh, why the UN um, decade was proclaimed. Um, this week, uh, we had the opportunity to watch some videos regarding the challenge, challenges and risks uh, the ocean faces, uh, starting from uh, marine pollution, oxygen decrease, acidification, uh, ecosystem degradation, but also over exploitation. Um, and so on, and of course, climate change, uh, as well as a dedicated uh, video on uh, the single use plastics, uh, which is a topic that is uh, particularly trendy and hot these days. Uh, next week, we will uh, move to the solution and to the solutions to these challenges. And the final week, I remind everyone, we talk about more uh, education approaches, action approaches, and um, uh, communication. So the course in numbers, um, although we had the, uh, close to 200 applications from 58 countries, um, it seems that uh, uh, between 80 and 90, uh, about half of them uh, have logged in the platform and follow the course content, which is something expected, of course. And uh, actually 40 of them uh, have completed the tasks uh, for week one, which is, um, shows a high commitment from, from a part of you. Uh, more than 10 post questions. In the last meeting, we were 38 in the last live meeting, the first we had, but uh, more than 60 people uh, view it afterwards. So it makes sense to, to record it. So um, we are 25 now online and um, I would like to ask you, the, the participants that are now here, to note in the chat how much you have progressed in the course content. So just note in the chat the one number from zero to two. Zero if you do, haven't uh, had the chance to log in yet. One if you are started but uh, it's hard for you to catch up. Or two if you are keep up the pace with um, with. Uh, course and I see wow well, I, I, I see a lot of tools 
um, and someone's okay. One, <laughs> I think one dominates. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, regarding the evaluation of week one, uh, for those of you that have completed it, uh, some notes uh, that you shared with us. What you like um, so far is the videos, um, the way that they are structured, the simplicity of the language, and that the fact that uh, it detaches from the scientific lingo. Uh, was uh, considered a positive aspect. A good mix of videos with the texts and the re references that uh, we uh, share uh, so that those of you uh, who wish to can delve deeper into the issues that we um, uh, we see every time. Uh, uh, some of you mentioned that uh, you like that the fact that you work at your own pace, so the fact that it is asynchronous is there uh, throughout the week and uh, whenever you have time you can log in and uh, watch the videos and uh, we have also good words about the padlets and the sliders. Uh, now, things that can be improved. Uh, you ask for longer space for live interaction between you. Um, this is something that uh, we will do um, also in this uh, live Zoom meeting. So we have devoted some space in this live meeting for a group uh, session where you will have the opportunity to discuss uh, uh, with uh, the people that are here in the call. Um, more specific ideas and action uh, will be generated as we progress in the course, so uh, more ideas will be generated in week uh, three and in week four and concrete examples uh, that demonstrate that we're not talking uh, about uh, theory, but ocean literacy is not uh, only a theory, but it's also quite uh, uh, applied, something that can be very much applied. Uh, you ask for references and uh, um, that uh, references should be collected and circulated afterwards. This is something, of course, that we will do. Um, but um, I, uh, I invite you to notice that in every week we share with you uh, some selected references and it's not the same um, references every week in order not to uh, you know, scare you with a lot of uh, extra readings. We, we have uh, chosen to, to separate them. Um, videos subtitled in other languages. This is a nice idea uh, that demands a lot of uh, work and time. Uh, this is at, at this point, uh, this is something that we can do, but maybe we can consider it in the future. And if some of you uh, that speak other languages want to contribute, uh, send us a message and we will uh, see to how to respond to that. Um, so I, I mentioned already uh, that in week two, we start from the SDGs and SDG uh, 14 especially. Um, then we delve into risks and threats uh, for the ocean globally. And here we have uh, um, the videos from the IOC colleagues. And I see with us already, um, Ms. Lovat has joined. It's a colleague from IOC. Uh, then we um, zoom in the, the challenges um, in the Mediterranean Sea, so it's a, it's a um, continuation of the lecture of Mr. Dayanis that we uh, saw also in week one. Uh, we follow um, Professor Skoulos on a case study. Uh, he's um, interacting with the local uh, fishermen, they're out in the sea. Uh, trying to catch fish, but actually they catch a, a lot more lagocephalus, which is an interesting invasive uh, uh, species uh, that seems to dominate uh, the southeastern part of the Mediterranean. And we have some extra videos on uh, single-use plastics from um, Jennifer, um, which I think are uh, quite insightful. So after these uh, uh, housekeeping notes, uh, we propose to give some time to uh, the experts. Uh, Professor Skoulos uh, is here with us and Valentina Lovat from IOC UNESCO is here with us. Um, we can have about 30 minutes or if you judge we need more, we will um, see to that and then uh, devote another 30 minutes to uh, uh, this breakout session where we will discuss a, a topic of um, interest. 
and we will uh, again gather in plenary for some uh, conclusions and open discussion. So I think that's it from me. So I stop sharing. Mm -hmm. I think, do you still see my screen? Yes, uh, yes, we still I don't see your screen. I stop sharing. Okay. So Professor Skoulos and uh, Valentina are here. Uh, Professor Skoulos, you want to yeah. start with some welcome? Yes, first of all, I would like to welcome Valentina, who is with us, and uh, I'm very Thank glad you. for that. Thank you and, very much. Uh, and, uh, and all of you, and all of you, I see many uh, familiar names, not the... the Um, uh, so I may uh, uh, try to answer some of the questions and then um, stay for a while, but I have to move to the next room. Um, do you want me, so uh, Iro, do you want me to, to read the different questions and uh, try to answer? Yes, we have some problems with your connection. Just uh, be aware of that. You can, you can do that. You can fix it, but uh, just talk um, slowly. So even if you are interrupted, we can uh, hear you. I will lost him. Okay, they will uh, log in back. He's uh, He's right now in another seminar. He's not here with us in the office. That's why we have this problem today. Um, maybe we can start with Valentina in the meantime. Valentina, warm okay. uh, welcome uh, to you as Thank well. You. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having being me. here. Valentina has been in the team of IOC. She's one of the people that were behind the scenes of these wonderful videos that we have been viewing in week one and two, and we'll keep viewing. So um, all the experts do know, do have the link, the, the slide link with the questions. Uh, it's a bucket of questions uh, that we collect uh, every week, and now we have the opportunity to get your views on that. So, welcome. Ah, I was yeah, about we to have the professor back. We have the <laughs> professor. And you are muted. You are muted, professor. Sorry, I apparently there are some problems, some connection problems. Okay, I'll try to, to, to uh, give some. Um, answers to the questions actually there was a, a, a first a, a question also um to thanos um uh, dailianis uh, shall i start with his reply because he couldn't uh, make it today um the question was um uh, about um um the invasive species the alien species and uh, the question um, is if we can remove large parts of the uh, herbivorous fish, which is invasive, um, with uh, methods, um, uh, with interventions, introducing other species. Um, and um, this, is a, this is a very difficult, actually, issue. The reply of Thanos is not to uh, he does not favor um, this kind of uh, uh, intervention of um, species, other species, um, competitors, or uh, um, uh, that uh, could uh, actually um, 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 uh, Oh, this is really bad. We don't, first of all, we don't. And uh, the pressure um, might be even, uh, you know, greater with the new uh, interventions, particularly uh, with this uh, 
Siga, Siga needs the, the rabbit uh, fees. Um, she recommends enhancement of the overall protection measures, which could benefit top level consumers. And in this way, imposing natural control of herbivorous fish. And of course, when we can have active restoration of the vegetation itself, this is something, an intervention that is um, safe or more safe. Um, I think there is also uh, another question of this type somewhere. And uh, uh, also someone is asking for the mangroves. Um, I'm not an expert on that. And uh, we don't have mangroves in, uh, in the Mediterranean. However, the question is if uh, expansion of mangroves plantation affect the marine environment negatively. My um, immediate uh, but not um, learned answer is, uh, I don't think that there is a problem. There are problems uh, in other cases when, for example, in deltas or in uh, um, lagoons, we have the expansion of uh, uh, some um, vegetation like reeds and other things. Uh, yes, there we may have problem, but with open um, systems, I don't think that we have uh, uh, problems. Now, uh, there are a number of uh, questions about um, um, how uh, we can uh, um, uh, have solutions to reduction of use of uh, single-use plastics for restaurants and cafes. And there are a number of uh, other questions about uh, uh, this uh, problem. The, the issue is, uh, of course, we start with awareness. Uh, but the second is the, also um, the incentives uh, and uh, combined with regulation. Uh, as you know, already these are uh, um, not allowed in Europe and uh, um, in many parts also of the Mediterranean outside uh, Europe, the, there are uh, bans for plastic bags and other things. So a combination of uh, um, restrictions, awareness raising, incentives, and use of alternatives um, would uh, make the difference. Um, there is no, however, I mean, in general, um, there is a question about if it is possible to have sanctions um, on states on the basis of their international engagements, considering that they didn't take necessary measures to protect the ocean. Well, uh, in, in general, um, the most of the legislation um, uh, the international legislation uh, is um, based on name and shame. Um, it is not easy to go uh, there and uh, have a, a sanction or uh, have a, a, a ask for compensations or whatever for state unless they, uh, they, uh, they, they, they are responsible and there are proofs of major uh, pollutions, large-scale pollutions, uh, like oil spills and other kind of these things. But for um, uh, example, for plastics, it's extremely difficult to, to have uh, this kind of, uh, of sanctions. Uh, there is, a, there is a, an increasing understanding that the law of the sea uh, needs to be implemented and have uh, many, um, there is a, a potential. Uh, it uh, took too many years to start uh, implementing it because there are several countries that deny actually um, the, uh, uh, the question altogether, the law of the sea. But um, I'm sure that um, uh, the 
also the decade, the ocean decade, uh, will help uh, moving the international community to uh, more respect of uh, uh, the international legislation. But we are still far from having it uh, fully operationalized uh, worldwide. Um, there are uh, there is a question about um, microplastics uh, and um, uh, three questions actually um, about carrying heavy metals uh, about their source for um, for uh, um, uh, washing and washing machines and also the link uh, with uh, um, with uh, uh, biodegradable plastics. Let me put that uh, a, a little bit clearer. Um, this is a microplastic is a very big problem because uh, it is uh, almost impossible to re not almost it is impossible to remove them uh, from the moment they are in the ocean. Um, the the major problem is not what they carry. Of course, they may, some of them may have also heavy metals, uh, but they are not the main, this is not the main problem. Um, the main problem is that uh, because of their size, because uh, they can be mistaken by biota uh, as um, a plankton or other uh, uh, minute uh, organisms, they enter the uh, food chain. And even there, we don't have uh, clear uh, proofs on the extent of the damage. It is a problem, and uh, it is a problem because of the huge quantities of that. The problem will be more severe in the coming years, despite the uh, the fact that we have removed them from many of the cosmetics or uh, um, detergents and uh, toothpaste or whatever, because, and here we come to the link with the decay of plastics. The plastic decay is actually creating many of these microplastics. The big uh, pieces of plastic age weather into smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you imagine the amount of plastics we have in the ocean, little by little, these are going to decay, but in, in what way? In frag through fragmentation, they create smaller and smaller things. Now on the biodegradable, the biodegradable were, were designed to decay under ultraviolet uh, light and uh, humidity uh, and conditions, a lot of oxygen we have on terrestrial systems. This is not the case in the sea. So in the sea, we have a very slow decay and uh, therefore, even the period of their life as in, in the forms we know or similar uh, will be longer. And the result is, as I said, a series of different particles, different size of particles going to smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is the problem. Yes, Indeed, we can design also better uh, washing machines with more efficient filters uh, to minimize, not get rid 100%, because otherwise uh, you need uh, very dense, very uh, filters that uh, uh, will increase a lot uh, the energy consumption. So there are many uh, issues that are uh, interlinked and we need to, to take them in a holistic, in an in integrated way uh, together. Um, uh, 
what uh, the uh, there are questions about uh, noise uh, I don't know if Valentina may deal with that. Um, also, there are um, there are few um, two questions about uh, uh, ocean health index. Uh, perhaps also this can be dealt by Valentina. Um, and uh, I don't know if there are uh, any uh, other. Um, well, on how does ocean literacy address can be applied when the root causes of pollution cannot be dealt with through local action, the pollution uh, traveling currents. Well, this is a huge problem. Um, still, uh, we have to see the um, ocean literacy as uh, a very uh, powerful tool uh, that um, acts from local to global and vice versa. Not It is not something that will solve local, always local uh, uh, problems. We have to see that uh, th there is a, a dynamic through uh, ocean literacy, a dynamic relationship. Um, so indeed, uh, if uh, we manage to um, spread the message uh, all over the world, we expect that uh, the important thing is the input into. I mean, the uh, land-based source, how we reduce this. And um, there is a question here about the big rivers. Theoretically, we can have particularly we see this in smaller rivers, we can have systems of um, movable, removable and movable dams in inverted commas in the del deltaic areas. And we have these kind of things in smaller systems where you can actually capture, collect, stop big uh, um, inputs of uh, particularly uh, voluminous uh, plastics. Um, there are many proposals for these systems, but if you get into the very big uh, rivers, the uh, plastic comes um, together with a lot of um, uh, um, earth with sediment that comes from upstream together. So it's extremely difficult to manage to stop and collect this material. You can do that for the one that is in the surface, and uh, it is enough. I mean, this is uh, uh, already a way, but uh, it is a costly uh, business with many technical uh, problems. and. Uh, also, it is uh, season, I mean, depends on the seasons. So uh, it is not an easy way to get rid of that by capturing in traps uh, what it comes into the sea. Um, this is why we always insist also through uh, ocean literacy on the prevention and uh, reducing uh, the consumption per head of plastic using all what you can in order to avoid creating the pollution uh, in the different um, sectors of the um, society um, and also, I mean, uh, the industrial sector, including, but also agricultural and so on and so forth. Um, I stop here. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Valentina will uh, will uh, give you a lot of in information, and I stay with you for some time to see if uh, uh, I can uh, uh, answer any question in the coming, let's say, half an hour, less than half an hour. 
Thank you, Professor Skoulos, and thank you everyone for inviting me to be here to this session. Uh, it is a real pleasure. And uh, yes, I'm going to answer some of new questions. And I agree on what uh, the professor said until now on all the other questions that he already answered. Um, starting from the Ocean Health Index, I saw that there were two questions related to that the topic that was mentioned by um, the, colleague, the colleague Kirsten Forsberg um, in, the, in the, the Ocean Literacy Training from the IOC. Uh, this is an index. So one question was related about percentage and the other question was about the methodology used to calculate this index. Uh, so this is an index, so it's not really a percentage, um, but it's more a scale from zero to 100. Uh, what is, uh, what, when we are dealing with an index, the most interesting thing is uh, related about the methodology used to calculate this index. Uh, so I'm, I'm not directly engaged in calculating this specific index. So what I can say to you and tell you is to uh, go to their website of the Ocean Health Index, where you are able to consult the methodology, also access the data that are used to calculate this index, uh, which are open data from um, open platforms. And so you can really better structure on, uh, uh, to better understand and uh, make your critical points related to that uh, way to measure the health status of the ocean. One interesting thing that can be related to that index is that if we can consider, if we consider the index of the 2019 and the index and the today index in 2022, we can see that the um, the, the final number it's lower so it is it means that the health status of the ocean is decreasing so this is a i think interesting way to approach an index try to understand firstly the methodology how the data are collected and how uh, the final uh, let's say percentage is calculated in in this case from 0 to 100 and when we when, so every time we see an index we need every time to be critical on that on that point and try to look at the index uh, um, and understanding better the data. And if the index is calculated since uh, a past period, we can go on through all the different series of data from, in this case, I think is 2012 to 2022. So we can see how it changed during the years. Uh, I saw that Hiro sharing in the chat all the links related to that index. And then the second uh, point was about noise pollution. And uh, the question was related uh, to the how noise pollution can affect the health of aquatic species and then uh, affect directly human health. So it's sure noise pollution is affecting the um, health status of the biota, of the biodiversity living in the ocean and living in the Mediterranean Sea as well, because the Mediterranean Sea is one of the um, basins where the noise pollution is really high because we have we the, in the Mediterranean Sea we have one of the main the most important trade um, route all over the world, and the uh, Mediterranean Sea is also a semi-enclosed basin. Uh, so the noise pollution is affecting biodiversity in different ways. Um, first of all, the communication of the biodiversity. If we consider the Mediterranean Sea, we have one of the areas uh, which is uh, um, which is known for the huge amount of cetaceans and marine mammals living there, for example, the Pelagos Sanctuary. And at the same time, is also one of the parts of the Mediterranean where there is a, a huge amount of traffic, of the naval traffic and trade traffic um, passing by. Uh, in that case, noise pollution can create confusion in the communication of these uh, uh, species in cetaceans, for example, but, and this caused, for example, the, um, 
uh, disorientation, so uh, the uh, lack of ability of finding the main route of these cetaceans. Uh, so one times happened, for example, that a whale uh, came out, let's say, from the main area because it wasn't able to locate itself uh, into the great environment. And this can have a long-term uh, effects in the health of the population status of the cetaceans in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, other conditions, if we consider noise pollution, is that the ocean is becoming loud, let's say. Uh, as we live in our big cities and in metropolis where our, um, our he hearing system is always uh, subjected to a lot of uh, uh, screaming, a lot of rumors, the same happens under the water. So to communicate, the organism needs to scream more, be more loud. So this is increasing the stress level, the anxiety of the biodiversity living in the marine environment. How noise pollution can affect uh, um, also the um, human health. Uh, let's say noise pollution Underwater, we are not living directly underwater. We are able to stay underwater for a few, uh, uh, really little time. Uh, so it's not directly affecting us, but our daily life uh, above the sea surface, like say in the in our cities, is always subjected to noise pollution, and noise pollution is affecting our stress level and our uh, also hearing abilities. So yes, it's affect, in some ways affecting also human health. Uh, these are the two questions. Uh, then I can scroll to see if there are new other questions that the professor of school didn't answer yet, but I think that he answered all the others. <laughs> uh, about the mangrove plantation affect the marine uh, environment negatively. I agree with what the professor Skula said. And uh, mm, like say planting mangroves in general is not, uh, um, it, it uh, have a positive impact on the environment if you plant mangroves in their ecosystems, obviously, or where there were mangroves forests previously that humans went there to, uh, let's say, cut them out. So it depends always where, when, and how you uh, decide to manage this regeneration project. Uh, and this is uh, related to mangroves forest, but is also related to all the other projects of regeneration. So if you consider forest, this is the same, this, this, the same way to approach a project. You have always to consider the location, you have to consider the biodiversity, the ecosystem, the species, and uh, you have to have an holistic view of the place where you are going to run this kind of project. I, I, I see that there are two more questions that I may try to answer and perhaps uh, you may compliment uh, uh, Valentina, there are two more general questions. The one is population growth and coastal urban growth, two core drivers behind ocean depletion. Indeed, but uh, the population growth, um, population growth um, is uh, is higher in uh, in developing countries. Um, the uh, there is a, a, a proven connection between um, a quality of life and population growth. Um, it is a matter also of education. So um, it, it, in, in many ways, uh, this uh, cannot be um, with ethical means um, addressed uh, differently than with family planning and uh, uh, also um, education. Uh, as for the, the urban growth, um, yes, indeed, we have uh, the so-called littoralization. We have more and more people coming and living across the, the coastline. Um, only regulation 
allowing for uh, big parts of the coast uh, to to be to be to be maintained to be maintained in natural conditions so also the expansion of coastal protected areas and other designated areas might help on the other question about uh, uh, reduced sea mining uh, this uh, the projection is that we are moving to higher uh, mining in uh, in uh, in deeper parts of the ocean and uh, again this has to do with the first uh, what i mentioned before uh, about the law of the sea uh, the extraction could be reduced by recycling, by much more, particularly for uh, material like metals and rare earths and other things. Uh, and the other is our hydrocarbons. We hope that hydrocarbons will be, the extraction will be reduced with uh, the development of uh, renewable energies. As for the metals and the rest, um, we, uh, have to increase our recycling the, 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 to close the, the loop uh, instead of getting uh, more and more uh, virgin material. So this is all what I, I can add. And I apologize that I have to, to leave. Uh, so it was nice seeing you all and see you next and week as well. Prof Professor, do you have just one minute? Yes. Uh, there is an idea in the Slido for uh, Mario to start a campaign on uh, banning the plastic bags in uh, 22 Mediterranean countries. How would you feel about that? And there is a very uh, recent question on uh, eating uh, bacteria, plastic eating bacteria. We yeah. discussed it a little bit the previous week. We thought we were hesitant, but yeah. maybe it's an opportunity no, to repeat. Uh, well, uh, uh, personally, I'm totally against uh, the uh, in, in, uh, inserting uh, in natural spaces bacteria or whatever. We can do that in pools uh, under controlled conditions, but this means uh, first we have to fish the and remove the plastic and then try to use bacteria. If this uh, this is a solution, one of the solutions but not in the sea. That, uh, I, I, I think that uh, uh, we should not make the sea an open, um, you know, experiment. Uh, uh, this will, is not wise. Uh, for, uh, uh, for MIO to have, a, a, we have a campaign and uh, we try to influence all the countries. We, we are doing that, we have done that, uh, through the Barcelona Convention. And the Barcelona Convention is uh, at the moment actually promoting uh, the um, banning of uh, uh, single-use plastics. It is, uh, it is in the hands of uh, individual countries. I'm not talking about the, uh, the north uh, of the countries uh, of the European Union where we have the ban already. But uh, we are talking about the non-EU countries of the region. Mm, several of these countries have already bans. But yes, indeed, we can have even a more drastic uh, campaign. Thank you very much for the proposal. And see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Uh, so at this point, we... Uh... I think it's uh, we say goodbye to Professor Skoulos and uh, Va Valentina, uh, who already replied uh, to some questions. I see some yeah. activity can also I, in the chat. But you yes, can... can I say a bit more about that thing? So yes, it's related to mangroves, but we can have. I use mangro mangroves as an example, but can be related also to uh, sea grasses or other species. So when you do a regeneration project. Uh, you cannot say, okay, I want to do a regeneration project here, go there and do it and plant wh whatever you want. You have always to consider which are the environmental conditions, which are the uh, uh, autochthonous species living in this uh, environment, or the reason why 
there are, I don't know, I'm talking about, for example, Bangladesh or Indonesia or Philippines, where that are countries that usually have mangrove forests in front of coral reefs. So firstly, you have to ask yourself why we haven't mangroves anymore in that location. There is a reason behind that. Then when you find the problem and the reason that can be pollution, can be uh, aquaculture facilities, can be, um, I don't know, uh, an, a new harbor, uh, can be a new touristic resort or other uh, motivations, you can uh, ask, when, when you understood the problem, then you can develop a solution. And when, when you are developing a, a solution, also in this case, you have to consider all the environmental conditions that there were in the past, so previously, that the problems appears, and what you want to achieve in the future. So mangroves forests, we say mangroves. Mangroves are a lot of species. So considering uh, your location, and uh, the environment ecosystem that you decided to um, uh, to regenerate, you have to decide the best species that fits for the, this environment. And also, are mangrove forests usually made uh, up only from one species, or do I need to consider to plant different species to increase the diversity of the ecosystem? So. It's complex, let's say, and uh, this is what I want to, to tell you. Planting mangroves usually has a positive impact, but if you plant mangroves in the Mediterranean, probably the impact will be negative because they are species that are not from this area. So, and that's why we need to have holistic approaches because there was a comment in the chat, yes. what do we mean holistic? So, so mean, it means that we need to to study in depth the ecosystems, as you say, in depth in space and in, in time. So what was there, uh, what fits there, um, and, and manage it in this uh, in this way. Yeah. Uh, I don't uh, know if uh, you want to reply to or you if you have any impressions on the topics uh, raised in the Slido, Valentina. Uh, I think that we answer everything. Yes. And so, we share the resources. Yes. Uh, if people happen to have any more specific questions, you are welcome to write it in the chat or in the slide of week two or of week three. And next week we will come back to them. Uh, I'm sorry to say to everyone that we won't have uh, Valentina uh, throughout the meeting, so she won't be with us in the break yeah, sorry. The session. But uh, thank you for uh, your time, for being, uh, for being here and for being uh, no, supportive. Thank Please. you for you. It's always a pleasure. I'm sorry I missed up to the time zones and I have another meeting. No so problem. sorry. No problem. Thank you very um, much. Okay, uh, so we say goodbye to Valentina and we have uh, maybe, uh, bye bye, uh, 15 minutes to to discuss a, a topic um so uh, um let me just uh, share share with you again our intended question so can you see my screen So uh, I propose to break in uh, we are 28 now uh, I propose to break in four groups <laughs> and see uh, in groups of four or five people so that everyone has the opportunity to speak. So this week in the course we discussed about threats, challenges, climate change, acidification, astrophication, uh, all these uh, doom and gloom. Uh, risks that the ocean faces and um, we know that um, talking to, to people in, in, in this way uh, makes them uh, over, feel overwhelming or disempowered they feel that the problem is too big for them to solve it so I propose in our groups to discuss uh, uh, our views and our um, opinions about uh, how we can raise awareness and uh, make people alarmed on the severity of the situation and the risks of the ocean and the urgency of taking action, but do that in a hopeful way without, without making them feel uh, overwhelmed or disempowered. 
so I hope this is a, a nice topic to to exchange and uh, when we are in our group groups uh, we will stay for 15 minutes uh, so we can introduce ourselves uh, preferably with the, the camera switched on assign a reporter and then discuss this question and uh, when we come back in plenary reporters will have uh, uh, two or three minutes to 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 um, to comment on the main points of discussion. Uh, I hope this is clear. I will copy also the uh, the question in the, in the chat. Let me just uh, stop sharing so that you have the question also in the chat. And uh, with the help of uh, Vicky, we will uh, uh, split. Uh, we will split in our groups. Vizal, you're with us? Uh, sorry, but uh, uh, I will not be able to join the group because I need to take care of the technical things. So you can start your conversation without me, but I'm going to I'm going to follow you in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Uh, what about this uh, group? It's too silent. So, Celine, Haven't you heard yet uh, your conversation, your discussion? Or uh, I see Marie Therese, Alexandra, Solji, Ariana, Kedibon, Johnson. Come on, you people. Don't be shy. Hello, dear. It's Marie Therese. Hi, How Marie Therese. You? I'm fine. I'm fine. Would you like to to share with the rest and spark a little bit any idea about we, how we can discuss 
on uh, ocean risk, but without, uh, you know, making people feel so condemned or uh, frightened them. Can I talk? Yes, please, the floor is yours. And then uh, I'm going to be silent and uh, let you discuss, okay? And also you need to choose uh, to appoint one uh, rapporteur for the plenary. Please, Marie Therese, you have the floor. Thank you. I think uh, the most important to go through uh, schools and universities. It's very important to uh, make a session in schools for youth to make to raise awareness about uh, the risk of, uh, of uh, climate change, of, uh, the, of this disaster, of, of our problems, you know. And uh, it's, it is very important to go through uh, the education system also. For example, uh, in my country, in, in my city also, Biblos, we have a committee specialized for disaster. They make our, all people when we have a problem. For example, if there is a flood or if there is a, a, a fire in forest or any problem we have, uh, the committee can aware uh, the people. And uh, during the year, they make some awareness for, uh, for the municipalities, for the local community, to know how to raise the problem before the problem coming. Okay? So, Marie Therese, you are talking about uh, informing uh, the people starting from the schools and education, engaging the citizens, uh, make them be prepared, uh, prepare them. Uh, okay. Uh, your points are very well taken. Uh, any other ideas? On the question that they posed on the chat? on the plenary. Alexandra, I see you wave your hand, your head. <laughs> uh, you are muted. We cannot hear you, Alexandra, if if you if you're talking. No, you, you're not I see in this group also Jin Tanaka, I think from Japan. Hello. Hi, Hi how are you, Jin? Yeah, good, good preparation for the mini stuff. Would you like to share with us any ideas, any thoughts? So, okay, hold a second. So I'd like to share the, some ideas for the especially for the focus on the ocean literary just until yesterday the unesco yes yeah unesco uh, iwra i mean the emerging uh, pollutants for the protecting water quality for the health and people just mention about the they need to the concerning about the protection of the not only to the water but also the oceans especially for the concept of any other biodiversity and that time i guess that we need to the focus on to the more more focus on to the some biospheres and biodiversity. Likewise, to the, some of the areas like, like uh, in the Asia Pacific countries, as uh, more than that, uh, maybe it's uh, good sometimes to scare a little bit the people. I lost you, I cannot uh, hear you. Yeah, uh, uh, agree with sorry. You. What about singing? What did you think? I cannot hear you. Can you? Can you? No, now it's better. Yes, okay. And then, like, the focus on to the engagement for the, not only to the, the waters, I mean, 
some international rivers or some ponds or some swamp, but they also focus, strongly focus on the ocean as well. Likewise, so just two months later, we, the, the UN agency going to host the UN Water Conference in the US. And so we mentioned about how they can manage for the, water, the quality of the waters. And that time we also, the, I like to also focus on to the, to the so we mentioned about the biodiversity in oceans because many of the water resources is connecting to the oceans mm -hmm. and nutrients and the industries and also any of the stuff is strongly connected to the biodiversity as well. So I like to propose to the, these kinds of ideas and so based on the knowledge I experienced in this course uh, to bring to the, the UN agencies to strongly more focus on to the protection of the, the waters and setting up to the, to the uh, marine protected areas in each country, if I could. So that's my idea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aurora, can you hear us? Hello, yes. Uh, sorry for the late. Uh, it is impossible to connect with the video, so I can hear you and I can represent myself. Mm -hmm. I'm Aurora Pirovich Zulai. I represent the World Point Association in Albania. Mm -hmm. I am a biologist and uh, I worked uh, also for uh, marine protected areas, especially for marine litter uh uh issues in uh, in albania i was part of uh, mediterranean uh, act for litter project mm -hmm. and so i just entered to know what uh, the topic is uh, you are talking about and how uh, i can contribute or i can profit from this um, um discussion yes actually we are sharing some ideas on how we can uh, transmit uh, the ocean themes and discuss about the ocean uh, risks without overwhelming people but it's okay if you don't okay. if I you can... have something anything okay. to share with us right now uh, if I can add to this uh, discussion and the thoughts of uh, SLE. Or uh, anybody else from this group or Aurora, since you yeah. are talking now. Mm -hmm. uh, my target groups are the youth. So sometimes in many projects, uh, I am part of uh, environmental education with the youth, especially that lives in protected marine protected areas. And so, for example, with a power association, we uh, collaborate just to raise the awareness uh, about the mammals, uh, mammals uh, of the oceans, and uh, and also how to reduce the plastic uh, pollution, or or to uh, or uh, we were part of capacity building for. Uh, marine protected area, area administ administration agency uh, just to take measure how to take measures just to reduce the plastic pollution in marine protected areas great marie therese can you you have the floor yes. you will share also with the plenary our uh, small <laughs> ideas huh? i'm sure you will please Yes, um, if we can start, for example, to make a strategy and guidance for key leaders on risk taking in the problem, in any problem you may have it, or any problem, or or any uh, any risk we have it. Uh, we can make an ethical decision making. If we have this problem, how to deal with? We can make a wide acceptance of the importance of risk management. Why you need to make a risk, risk management? It's very important. We can make information. Uh, across 
all problems, problems of seas, problems of land, problem of air, any problems we can uh, get it. And we can learn from the impact of risk. And we can learn from others how to deal with the problems. We can go uh, through uh, the country more, um, more uh, informed in this problem and, and we can learn from them. We can be more active uh, to, ac to access and make a trainer uh, session for the risk management skills. We can do many things. This is my idea. Thank you. Thank you, Marie Therese. Thank you. So risk management, risk assessment before get informing the people and sharing about uh, and talking about the risks of, of course and the threats uh, of the coast of the sea and the ocean. Uh, any other idea? Uh, I think time is up. Yes, we go back to the plenary. Okay. Okay, we'll meet in, we'll meet in plenary. We still have a few seconds, but... Uh, uh, can I tell I something? We, yes, yes, please. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry, at the beginning I had some uh, technical problems because I'm using a mobile phone instead of... Uh, ah, that's uh, right. Uh -huh, so, uh, what I'd like to share with you, because I work as a ranger, I'm a head ranger in Lastova Islands Marine Protected Area in Croatia. And uh, I have once a week, I have a guided tour around the, our islands in our, our archipelago. And what I see as very strange is that people who are our visitors, who are um, kind of different people because they have to travel a lot of hours to come to our islands. I see they're not very interested in hearing about the problems. It looks like they feel it as a big burden they don't want to know. Um, usually during that um, excursion, which is like uh, that guided tour, which is like two, three hours, um, I take out my samples of the plastic uh, um, um, problem, etc., and then I show them these plastic samples and talk about it. But I see they don't like to hear about it. So when I was thinking about ocean literacy and giving that knowledge to people, um, I don't know what approach to take because people are obviously very burdened and when they are on their holidays, they don't want to hear about it. But, and I think that visitors are my target group. So yeah, thank you. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Alexandra. Indeed, it is not what you say is uh, what happens to all of us, especially when you want to take a break or uh, when you're watching the news, uh, all these uh, bad news all day. You, you're at some point you are, uh, you know, there is a certain point you don't want to, to hear more. Um, I think everyone is back. Maybe we can hear from some uh, group uh, reporters. Who wants to I'll to jump start? in and go first. <laughs> okay, so hi, my name is Celine. Uh, we were group one, and it was myself, Iru, uh, Yumoke, uh, Albert, and we briefly had uh, Visal, but uh, he just said here was he was taken to another group chat. It was a very diverse group. We were were from Nigeria, Greece, South Africa, and Spain. And uh, the issues that we discussed, for example, in Nigeria, uh, a, a large issue is flooding and deforestation. And the uh, solutions to that that were proposed was GIS mapping areas to study them and to essentially build up early warning systems and also to create awareness so that um, people can prepare 
and uh, in terms of um, the sorry uh, okay so in terms of the question that we had uh, another way of um, approaching people and not overwhelming them and uh, sharing about the issues of the ocean uh, was for example to use uh, citizen science where they can explore the ocean and become curious, learn about it, and also have a first-hand experience uh, so that they can see the problems, solutions, the beauty, where there's lack of beauty. Um, and also uh, one, of, one of the solutions was to take people directly to the ocean because, uh, yeah, he, when people fall in love with nature, they will become passionate about nature. Uh, to avoid numbers, statistics, percentages, uh, and rather stick to stories and narratives, and to speak to people who are on the ground, uh, such as divers, fishermen, who uh, interact with the ocean on a daily basis. Uh, so, so not just speak to experts and scientists, but also to people um, who have it as a livelihood, who, have, who are part of it every day. And uh, yeah, one of the comments was also, you know, you can show the beauty of the ocean, uh, but sometimes you also have to scare them a bit uh, to make them see the reality. And uh, one of the examples, which was a very much a in your face example, was that there was a big whale that was beached uh, in South Africa a couple of months ago. And you know that's that's an in-your-face moment where it drew drew crowds, and you can see uh, that there is an urgency. Um, the cause, not sure, uh, could be noise pollution, but uh, but yeah, that's that's everything for me. Thank you. Thanks, Celine. It was very nice to join the group with you. Who wants to uh, take the floor? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. So it's Misai from, from Algeria. So it was just Johnson from uh, India and me. Uh, the talk was about, um, it is like the right time to raise an awareness or we have to act right now to save our ocean. So our strategy is to be divided in two groups. The groups who will be in, who, who will act directly to save biodiversity, to save the habitats, and the other group will be integrated in education, ocean, ocean literacy, and we think that we have to start with children, which are the basis of this education, and uh, we were talking about the, um, the importance of telling the stories, so we don't have to afraid people, but just to push them to love the ocean, then to protect it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who wants to take the floor? Another uh, rapporteur, please. Yeah, I can talk on behalf of my group. Um... Yes, um, I don't know, Professor Skouros, if you want to. No, I just a small uh, comment. Um, we need uh, on uh, what uh, Wissal said before. Uh, honestly, uh, we need to keep a, a balance. We don't need to um, create fear and despair. Uh, but hope. At the same time, we need, as uh, it was said by Celine before, to put everybody uh, against uh, his, her responsibilities. We all have responsibilities. So um, it is not, uh, uh, it, it, it is always in a positive way in a positive way, but we definitely we need to inspire. Sometimes we have to say things that are, um, you know, not pleasant. We see that many of the things around us go 
to the wrong direction. And we have to say that, even if some are scared, but it's not for scaring. It is just in order to help, inspire them. Always we, we try for the best, but we cannot avoid to say things uh, realistically. And the, the situation today is not good. It's not good. Okay, we hear you now. Okay, so I'm going to proceed from my group. So we had a, a diverse group. Also, we have uh, we had people from uh, Lebanon, from Tunisia as well, and uh, from Spain. And we've been discussing, I mean, uh, the situation from our country perspective because we are different. And uh, I mean, geographically speaking, we are different. So uh, for us, for example, for Tunisia and Spain, Egypt, we have different. Uh, uh, I mean, the problem is about a mindset, is about awareness problem. So we need like to tackle awareness and we need to find like uh, some, some solution to act locally also. So, I mean, something that have been raised by my colleague from Lebanon as well in how we can act locally instead of globally at the national level. So we need like small, small initiative at the local level to make people aware of ocean literacy. And uh, uh, also something um, uh, important that has, has been raised is about education, which is very important because we need to start from a very early st stage, how to make people aware of ocean literacy. I mean, tackling, uh, I mean, ocean literacy at the primary school is very important. And uh, we need really, I mean, to interact with direct stakeholders um, that has been mentioned already with the first group. So we need to talk directly with fishermen, with people who are in the field, and uh, to find them I in mean, a solution and alternative uh, to... Um, we had not a lot of time to discuss all of this because we spent all of the time introducing each other. <laughs> but, uh, but then we had like uh, three minutes at the end to talk about uh, what could be done. And uh, this is, uh, I mean, globally what has been said in our group. Thank you. Thank you, Chokri, and thank you for uh, following uh, the entire uh, course uh, since the beginning. So uh, your contributions are very, very much welcome. Uh, we have one more. Yes, if I may. Oh, actually, Marie Therese was a reporter in our group, but I see that she has already written something in the chat. The whole proceedings of the of, the, of our small discussion, Marie Therese, would you like to to give us? The key two or three points? Mm, yes, it's a long point because we have already, I was a focal point on GNDR in Lebanon and we learn a lot uh, for, from the risk uh, management. Uh, first, we need to build a risk aware, awareness uh, culture. We need to educate about risk management. We need to clarify communication, what we expect if we had a disaster. Uh, we get to top level buy-in. We need to assign a responsibility for management specific risks. We need to establish incentives for the problems. We need a leverage technology to measure improvement and increase transparency. The risk awareness is just the first part of our overall risk management strategy. We need to build a risk management strategy how to, um, uh, how to, um, be, how to be uh, in front of the problem when we had the ocean problem disaster. But there is no way to respond quickly to a treat that you don't know is coming. So improving your risk identification and understanding is critical to effective emergency response management risk. And uh, in nine, but there is no way to respond quickly to a treat that you don't, that I said, uh, so improving your risk identification and understanding is critical to effective emergency response. And finally, consist guidance from key leaders on risk taking 
commitment to, eti to ethical decision-making, wide acceptance of the importance of risk management, transparent risk transform transformation uh, flow across all, all, all departments, all problems, ocean, forest, like I said, land, encouraging, encouragement of reporting risk issue to regulator, learning from impact risk, incentive for risk taking, active and accessible training for risk management skills, a whale resources risk management function for all the people on the ground, for the local community, for everyone. It means if we uh, conclude, we need to make a risk management plan and the strategy for the problem, for the disaster, we can face it in ocean or in land. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Marie Therese, uh, Professor Skoulos, if you have any response to that. My immediate reflection is that, that indeed, uh, as societies, uh, we need to be better trained in risk management because we are going to have a lot of more um, risky uh, phenomena around us. Risk management is... Uh... Indeed, um, well, uh, risk management is um, is very important, of course, uh, because uh, the our our uh, particularly the last generations have increased uh, the interventions in the environment with benefits, but also with uh, increasing the frequency and the size of uh, risks. So uh, it is important. It is not uh, necessarily uh, or mainly about ocean, but uh, Marita has mentioned that is also everything is connected. So terrestrial systems are important as well. So, um, I think that um, this um, the risk part um, is something that um, uh, is part of the ocean literacy, but uh, uh, not as risk management. It is uh, mostly in understanding the challenges of uh, of the risks in the sea. But um, thank you very much. Uh, Marie Therese for this uh, for bringing this issue here and we may actually spend a little bit more time on that in the future so much. Uh, uh, yes I don't know if you need to uh, if anyone wants to take the floor to give share an input from from the the discussions you had in the groups so um, we stress the role of uh, education and awareness, uh, planning. Uh, we stress the importance of uh, being into nature in order for um, for people to 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 love nature and uh, to feel connected to nature in order to be uh, then uh, motivated to act for it. We said that uh, we need to, uh, uh, of course, be transparent, com communicate the actual risks of, uh, of uh, the ocean, but at uh, the same time, uh, uh, communicate to them hopeful stories, stories that where change has, uh, has been uh, brought in order not to, to, to make people feel uh, disempowered. Uh, we talked about the value of uh, bringing uh, kids and starting early, uh, as early as primary school or even before. Uh, and uh, through citizen science projects, keeping this um, this connection to, to nature and to the sea um, uh, always uh, close. Um, I'm not sure if I'm... Uh, um, 
lacking something. Uh, Alessandra uh, earlier also noticed something about the tourists and the, the fact that tourists uh, tend to uh, wish to, to stick to the nice memories of the place that they visit. But uh, Alexandra, may, maybe if as a ranger in your uh, trips, uh, next time you, as you show to, to the visitors these uh, beautiful sceneries of uh, the place where you work, um, you know, uh, make them alarmed, but not over overwhelm them with, with the problem that, that uh, your region is, uh, is facing. This is an idea uh, how to, to, to cope with this challenge that you have, that visitors don't want to hear actually the, 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 bad, uh, the bad news. Uh, if anyone else wants to take the floor. Uh, Professor Skoulos, do you want to make some ending comments? I think we lost him. Can again. I, sorry, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes, please Well, I, I think the only thing I want to say is... Uh, uh, sorry? We have also... Can Martin, you hear me? Uh, we hear you with interruptions. And we, have all, we hear you with interruptions. And we have also Martina, who wanted to take the floor. Yeah, can I speak? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm sorry, but today I have a really bad uh, internet connection, so I lost uh, some parts, and then I will have a look on the recorded uh, version. Uh, before I was replying to Valentina Lovat uh, about the holistic approach, she was uh, uh, speaking about this, uh, what I'd like to pay attention to is also the social dimension uh, of our uh, field mission. Uh, for example, uh, in the last few experiences, uh, I experimented uh, uh, some relevant issues uh, related to uh, illegal aspects and uh, some... Uh, uh, bad, I would say, organization in this uh, context, uh, despite the formal recognition of the biosphere reserves. So uh, what I would uh, like to suggest uh, even to UNESCO and the other uh, uh, formal organization is paying more attention to the safety of the local uh, engaged experts, because sometimes uh, we are uh, uh, there on behalf of a bigger organization, but without proper uh, support when we experiment some uh, issues. Uh, this is a really interesting uh, job. This is uh, engaging and uh, we have a lot of things to do, but uh, there are some uh, warning and concern to be aware of especially for the younger uh, colleagues and professionals. Thank you. Professor Skoulos, you, you want to? We can hear you now. Uh, yes, uh, the only thing I wanted, yeah, uh, I wanted just to thank everybody and uh, remind everybody that uh, because of the different time zones, many people are, cannot join, uh, but they, as you said, they get through the material and uh, they participate. Uh, so I think that um, um, from, the, from the reactions of the people and uh, the things they, bring uh, to the table, uh, it is uh, clear that um, the, uh, the ocean literacy issue is very everybody. And um, uh, we, what we need to, to stress are some of the 
some of them, like the depletion of uh, fisheries, in, a, in one or another way, can be addressed. And we have uh, promising things there. Acidification is not the same. When you, you get uh, the, the sea acidic, You cannot change it. We need uh, and understand that, for example, acidification and increase of temperature and what is linked with the ocean, with the climate change, is a very, very serious problem, because uh, the ocean itself cannot play its natural role in. Uh, uh, actually buffering uh, the system we, uh, from the moment is acidic. So uh, we raise issues that are of extreme importance and uh, some of these issues require immediate political response. And one of the messages I want to say through all what we are doing is that uh, is power to react towards decision makers. We need at this moment, really, when we are talking about the COPs on climate change, we need to insist as citizens on a number of issues that we cannot afford to wait because we, there is no way that we are already in irreversible changes. And this is very important. If this is scaring, it is what it is. We have to say it. We cannot go back. It's not a matter of, it's not a matter of diplomacy here. So this is something that we, we need to keep in mind. That is all what I wanted to say. Thank you very much yeah, for your thanks. insightful uh, reflection on all the discussion. Uh, we are very, very late, but I give the floor just for one minute to Isabella, who has raised her hands, and then we close the meeting. You can, we cannot hear you. Just unmute you. I hope you can hear me now. Uh, my name is Isabella castriota Skanderberg. I'm a specialist in communication for peace and, and uh, sustainable development in a country uh, which is in Central Africa, Chad. Uh, we have very serious problems here in water management. I mean, not just for our own uh, daily life, but uh, for the whole population. I'm in the capital, in Jamena, and uh, we have been informed that practically all water sources are contaminated and dangerous. Um, we are providing ourselves with our water supply through plastic bottles, and I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed, okay? At the same time, I would like to do my job with uh, local authorities and try to convey uh, an example, a model, a pattern of uh, water management, which is sustainable and which goes directly in, to the goal, to the objectives that need to be achieved. It is an opportunity for these uh, very low income uh, countries to manage their problems and going directly to a sustainable solution. So my question to you all, uh, to you, Professor Skoulos is, what can we advise? Is there a pattern? Is there a model uh, that we can suggest? I mean, has there been done uh, by uh, UNESCO, by uh, the, uh, all the uh, experts in water management so that we can help countries like Chad uh, to better manage their water resources? Well, I can tell you that uh, there is no magic solution. We need to have uh, integrated water resources management. Since you are in Chad and since the water, uh, Global Water Partnership 
uh, of Southern Africa is one of the of the strongest uh, chapters of the Global Water Partnership. Perhaps you may uh, you may we may send you uh, the contacts uh, with uh, with them, uh, and I'm sure that they can be of help. Uh, it is a matter of uh, policies and implementation of policies. So um, it is, a, I know that is a very difficult uh, place. And, uh, but uh, there are um, many examples of um, fast improvement in many countries. So why not also in Chad? So, um, Send us, send us your coordinates. I will bring you in, in contact with some colleagues who can um, help or even visit uh, the country or get in touch with them directly. I will, I will call them. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm Welcome. afraid we're very late. Thank you very much uh, all for uh, staying uh, at 15 minutes after our official ending time. Uh, in next week, we are going to focus on uh, management to link with the discussion that we have uh, now. Uh, so we talk about uh, management, uh, integrated management uh, approaches and uh, ways to, to deal with the risks and the challenges that we discussed in the second week. So I wish everyone a nice weekend. Thank you. Maybe open up your cameras. Take yes. a Thank photo. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Chokri. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, all. Bye. 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 Bye.